Welcome everyone to our lunchtime learning segment here on the Brilliance Facebook page. Uh, today, we are going to be doing a little bit of digitizing in Stitch Artist Level 1. And this is just going to be a quick project on how to create an applique design using the built-in library shapes, just like this little design here. Uh, setting up a fabric preview, choosing the options as far as do you want to cut it in your hoop as if a, a traditional applique or if you would rather use a cutting machine and finally we'll run it, wrap it up with a color sort after adding some names and, and talking a little bit about the um, the process as that goes so let's pop on into our software and let's have some have some fun today so this is the design that we're going to create as you can see I have it um, here just in my uh, design page and I am in create mode and stitch artist level one. So what everything I'm going to show today and um, we will see, uh, let's see, what did I just say? <laughs> everything we're going to show today can be done in stitch artist level one. So all levels of stitch artists. So even if you're got the only level one, we're good to go. So let us start a brand new design page here in our program. So it's completely blank. As you notice, I, or maybe you didn't notice, but I have no hoop on my screen. Hopefully you guys remember one of our quick, from our quick tips that if you are missing anything from your, from your display, go to your view menu to see what is selected. As soon as you click on draw hoop and put a check mark there or hit the H key on your keyboard, your hoop shows back up. Normally when you're in, in the Embrilliance program, when you open it first up, you are in select mode. So that means everything you are working like in essentials. You are working, you can open designs, you have your main tool is the selection. So that is select mode. In order to start digitizing and to work in our, uh, with our digitizing functions, you must move into create mode. If you don't, if you have Stitch Artist, this is the button that you get. This is create mode. So if you have Stitch Artist and you don't have this button, make sure you've added your serial number and restarted your program. So let's say, um, if we're going to click on the create button and this will bring us right into stitch artist level one, cause that's the one, that's the program that I'm going to be working on today in, is in our program here, right to the left, to the right of create mode. We have our gear, which says merge designs from the library. Remember that if the video's choppy exit and reload, and you'll be able to come back in. Otherwise, this is recorded so that you can watch it at your convenience, um, either here on Facebook or on our YouTube channel. So next to the create mode button to the right of it, we have merge designs from the library. So I'm going to click on that button and that brings up our library functions. So in Stitch Artist, you have an outline library. In essentials, when you are in your, when you just have essentials, you have the Embrilliance library, which allows you to, you have a whole bunch of library shapes. These are already designs that are, have already been digitized. So if we go into our outlines, this is a stitch artist function. So these are all shapes that you don't have to uh, draw yourself. And I'm going to scroll down until I find the one, let's see, I think it's the shapes too. Yes. This is the one that has the shapes I'm going to work with. These are already drawn. And I thought, oh, I want to put a little paw print on a placemat for the water bowl for my puppy dogs. So I'm going to click on the bear paw. Cause that to me looks like a dog paw and I'm going to click. Okay. And it brings it into my hoop. Now, if you notice along the bottom here, it has no stitches. All I've done is brought in a shape. These, these are, if you look at your objects here, it just says lines. It does not say, um, have any stitches. They are just drawn objects. So these mean that means that they are wireframes, which means if I take my grab a cursor here and make it larger, those wireframes or those objects are all resized, but they still have no stitches. I need to assign stitches to them. 
Now there, each one of these has, is a separate shape, but I have them all selected at one time because I just want to turn this one paw print into a dog print applique. That applique function is part of Stitch Artist Level 1, and when you put your mouse cursor on the button that looks like the little E stitches, like an old-fashioned applique, it says, turn this into an applique. So I'm going to click on that one time, and all of a sudden, you will notice that in your object pane, all of those lines turned into applique objects. Also, our properties pane here has now has properties for all those objects. Now I have been digitizing and it remembers the last selections that I chose for my appliques. If you're brand new, if you haven't created one yet, most likely it will come in with just shapes and the letter E. That's the default when they first come in. But I want this to be a satin stitch applique. So where it says border and it says E stitch, I'm going to go to the pull down menu here and change that to be a satin stitch because I want these to be satin stitch appliques. If you want them to have a blanket stitch, choose the blanket stitch. These are the different finishing stitches and it assigns them to all the shapes that you currently have selected. So let's go back and change it to satin. Now you'll notice here that that's those satin stitches and I'm doing them all at once because I figured I might as well do it as quickly as possible. The density is set here and I have mine set for five points. What that means is the distance of that satin, how close to those stitches are together is half a millimeter. If you want to make it more dense, you would choose a smaller number because you want those stitches to be closer together. I usually recommend using the default settings unless you know you want to choose them, uh, change them. Sorry. Why, why change something if you're not sure what it's going to do? So leave it at the default. One thing though you may want to change is your stitch width of those satins because that dictates how far, how wide those satin stitches are going to be covering. And typically for machine embroidery applique, your width is set to about three and a half or four millimeters. So I'm going to slide that up to three and a half millimeters. And as you notice, that little stitch here is getting actually wider. While I, I'm going to go back and make it narrow. So watch the stitches in the thing. I'm going to move it down to 2.4. Do you see how they all got skinny? Now when you pull, move it up here to 4.0 4 uh, or 3.5, 3.5, here we go, they got fatter again. So that allows you to get better coverage, especially if you're doing hand trimming in the hoop. You don't want, you want that satin stitch to cover completely around those pieces of fabric. Now how do you know that there's actually pieces of fabric there? That's because I, I have an option here that says fabric preview. And because we have a position stitch, it will actually show you that there's going to be fabric in that hoop so that you can actually see that these are really applique. It's a great visual for you. Now, if you are hand trimming, you need to have both a material and a position stitch because applique is done by hooping your fabric. It stitches a positioning stitch so that you know where to place your applique fabric and then it stitches it down with a material stitch so that you can now remove your hoop, trim those pieces out and then replace your hoop and stitch the finishing stitch. So if you're doing it by hand, you need to make sure you have both of those selected, both the material and both and the position stitch because that's what a three part applique is. If you are creating cut files, Say you have a silhouette or a Cricut or a, um, a brother scan and cut, and you are going to be pre-cutting your applique shapes as shown in quick tip video number five on the Embrilliance YouTube channel, then you don't need to have both the material and the position. You only need one of those because it's going to put the positioning stitch down. You'll put your pre-cut shape in, fuse it in place and, and cover it. You don't need to have double things. But because we are going to be, I'm 
doing this project as if I was trimming this out by hand, I need both of those. Now, one thing to pay attention to, so I've had those three selected. I'm looking at my fabric, I have my position, and I have my material stitch. I'm gonna go to my color chips here, because right now I'm using the default colors. If you notice, wow, I have a whole bunch. I'm gonna make this bigger by, oh, by sliding my colors up. I'm going, wow, I'm gonna be having a lot of color changes in this design. I'm not worried about it because I see there's three colors and 15 thread changes. I'm going to do a color sort. So I'm not freaking out over the number of colors. But one thing that you can do with these color chips is change them all at once. For example, my finishing stitch is all set to this ready color. And my dog paws are going to be brown or black or white, depending on what color um, fab color you want to use. Yes, you can use any color at the machine, but if you want this preview to look like that, one of the quick options we have in the Embrilliance platform is that if you right click on a color chip, there's an option that says change the color on the page. Since I right clicked on that ready color and I click change color on the page that brings up my color change dialog box where I can scroll down and find the color that I want maybe I want this nice beige color for my my puppy print that's going to be here and it changes them all at one time so I don't have to change each individual one at a time and then if I click OK there I have it now you're probably wondering, how do I change the color of the fabric? Well, the fabric is set by the applique position color. So if I right click on this color and say change color on the page, and I'm going to get my little dialog box here, I can choose, say I want to use a white color and it changes all that fabric to white and click OK. And now I have a better representation to me as what this paw print's gonna look like. Now, I wanna put Oscar's name on this paw print because that's the name of my puppy dog, is Oscar. So I'm gonna click on my lettering tool here because I'm done digitizing. My paw print's done. I've set my, I have my position stitch, my material stitch, my other stitch, and now I'm gonna add his name on here. So I'm going to, let's see, maybe make this guy the regular size again. Under text, I'm gonna type in Oscar because that's his name. For the font, I am going to use the Flare Serif. I just love this font, it's part of Essentials. And I'm gonna click on Flare Serif, and that puts it here. I'm gonna move it down, right, so it's in that spot. That actually looks pretty darn good, the way it is right there. It's actually almost the exact size that I needed. I don't have to resize it. But if I did need to resize it, for whatever reason, you, we noted that we can grab onto one of the corners here. And once I have it, I have it in the right position. So I'm going to click on it, hold down the shift key on my keyboard and drag the corner. And if you notice, it resizes from the center out so that I don't have to worry about repositioning it or doing anything um, if you only if you don't hold the shift key down and you grab a corner, it resizes from that corner out. So then you have to click on it and move it back into place. But if you hold the shift key down, that allows you to resize from center out. So it saves you time for moving your, your design. I think I'm ready to stitch this. But that and Tina, that font is part of Essentials. You need to install the latest update, which is found on the Embrilliance website. So if you're missing that flare serif and you have Essentials, make sure you go get the most current version by downloading and installing it, and you too will have flare serif in your font list. But so now I am ready to send this to my embroidery machine, but I really don't want to change my thread. 16 times because that's what it's going to want to do. It wants to stitch each one of those separate. If I wanted to use different fabric for each one, then I might want to re I want to leave it the way it is because that would do each one separately. But I'd rather just do them all at one time. 
So I'm going to go, because I have Essentials installed, I'm going to go to the Utility menu and choose Color Sort. That opens up my dialog box here, and it tells me that I am going to reduce it by 10 color changes. Now, I do want it to combine all of my positions and all of my materials together. So I'm going to make sure that I have that those both checked so that when it does its color sort, it does combine all the applique positions and all the applique materials together so that we don't have to, to worry about it. I'm going to click on the new view because what that will do is open up a new design page. If you notice here, I only have one design. And if I click on that one design, it goes through and it says, I am going to stitch all of these colors. Let's see. Let's look at our colors. Why? Hmm. It looks like I had to keep stop in here because it is stitching all of the little paw prints down first. And then it's going to stitch the pad, which will allow me to either change fabrics or do you notice that there's a little tiny space here? And what it, that might be a little hard to trim. So the software knows that it's going to, it allows you to keep your colors separately. It's going to keep the same color at the machine, but it's going to stitch all of these first stop so that you can put that fabric down, put stitch this one down so that you can now trim your fabrics in place and keep your items separate. And then because they're all the same color here, it's going to, you, allow, it doesn't, you don't have to change the color at the machine and all of your finishing stitches are done at the same time. Now, the one thing I noticed is that Oscar is stitched after the applique finishing stitch. And sometimes I, you may want it for whatever reason, you want your lettering to stitch before the finishing stitch. Think of in the hoop projects or whatever it is that the, what the organization is that you don't want that to happen. I can click on this lettering object, click, hold, drag, and drop it up here in the top so that it's now going to stitch out in the order that I want it to stitch out in. Because you have complete control and it's easier to do once you've done it in your sorted file. Because then you know exactly when your items are going to stitch. It's going to stitch this color first this color second, this one, and this one, so that it keeps everything separate so that it's going to um, stitch exactly the way that I want it to, and then, then stitch the name, and then the finishing stitches on that. So hopefully, Eric, I see, has posted the link for um, the information, and I'll make sure I copy that into the YouTube channel. And that was a quick little project on how to create an applique design using a Stitch Artist Level 1. Thank you and have a wonderful afternoon.